Hello and welcome to another Science Tutor video. In today's video we're going to be giving an introduction to Hooke's Law. So Hooke's Law deals with elastic materials, right? um, particularly materials like springs and strings, especially those that are made of metals. Hooke's Law states that for an elastic material, if a force is applied to this material, then it produces an extension which is proportional to the applied force. A force is any physical interaction that usually changes the shape, size, or motion of a material. Right? So a force can produce a change in the shape, size, or motion of the material. Whenever a force produces a change in the shape or size of a material, it's referred to as a deformation. Right? The force is able to deform the material. If you think about um, a soft material like dough that's used for baking bread, if you have dough on a flat surface and you apply a force to it by pushing down in the center of the dough, then the shape of the dough will be deformed. Right? You'll end up with something looking like this. Applying the force causes the dough in this region to be moved, to be pushed to the sides. Right? And that's referred to as a deformation. If a force is applied to a material in one direction, in other words, say you have this piece of material and you apply a downwards force to it. If the material is elastic, then this can cause the material to actually change its length. Right? So it might go from an initial length, L1, to a longer length, L2. Right? The difference between L1 and L2 is referred to as the extension of the material. It's really a measure of how much the material has gotten longer. And is sometimes given the symbol X. Extension is a displacement and has units of meters. Now Hooke's law states that if this extension takes place in one direction, in, in other words, if the force and extension are linear, then the applied force is proportional to the extension produced. Yeah, the applied force is proportional to extension, or F is proportional to X. This means that as the amount of force applied to the material increases or varies by some amount, the amount of extension that is produced varies by the same amount as well, right, or by a proportional or, or by a constant ratio. We can actually make this relationship into an equation by adding a proportionality constant. This means that F is equal to some constant K times X. And this essentially is Hooke's law. Hooke's law states that the applied force is equal to some constant multiplied by X, your extension. Now what is this constant? The constant, k, is referred to as the spring constant for your material or for your object. And the spring constant is really just a measure of how much force is required to produce an extension of unit length. In other words, how much force is required to produce an extension using the SI system of one meter. Okay. Notice that F has units of newtons, because F is a force. Extension, X, has units of meters. If you rearrange Hooke's law for the spring constant K, you get K being equal to F divided by X, which means that spring constant has units of newtons divided by meters, or newtons per meter. Yeah. The larger the value of k is 
the more force that will be required to produce an extension in a given material. Right? Note as well that this equation is a linear equation, equation of proportionality, as we've been saying. This means that if you plot a graph with the applied force on one axis and your extension on the other axis, this graph should be a straight line. Right? The gradient of the straight line is related to the spring constant. If you plot x on your y-axis and f on your x-axis, then the gradient of this graph will be equal to 1 divided by k. Right? And how we get that is that, remember from Hooke's law, f is equal to k times x. If we rearrange this to make our y-axis variable the subject, then x is equal to f divided by k. The extension is being plotted on our y-axis, and f is being plotted on our x-axis, which means that the slope of this graph would be equal to 1 divided by k. All right. Now, if you compare two materials that have two different spring constants, then the slope of the graph will change. In other words, if you have graph 1 corresponding to a material with a spring constant k1, and you have graph 2 corresponding to a spring constant um, with, that is called k2, then we can see that for the same amount of extension, the first spring is harder to stretch than the second spring, yeah? which means that k1 is actually larger than k2. So the graph that has the graph corresponding to the material with the largest spring constant will have a much shallower slope, which makes sense because we did say that the gradient or slope of the graph is equal to 1 divided by k. Notice as well that if instead you had plotted f against x like this, then the gradient of this graph would be, or the slope of the graph would be equal to your spring constant. So this has been an introduction to Hooke's Law. We'll do some questions related to um, applying Hooke's Law to practical examples in, the next, in another video. Until then, thanks for watching and stay tuned.